guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Sketch Monkey here. I'm here with the 2024 Acura Integra. And this is not the A-Spec, this is the Type S, the proper Integra. Honestly, I think a better marketing decision by Integra would to just have this be the Integra because when the first Integra, the standard A-Spec was first introduced, I thought it was a bit of a lazy approach to, you know, a very classy car to just have basically a 2019 ILX in a 2024 model year and just slap some stickers and Integra pieces on there. This though, this is properly done. And the weird thing is, we're gonna talk more about, about this design, of course, in this video from front, side, the rear and the interior. But I think this looks so much better than the Honda Civic Type R. And they are, you know, siblings. And if I were to pick one, I would definitely go with this one. So let's have a look what's under the hood before we go in and talk about this beautiful design. Look at this pearl white, how it shines in the sunshine, looking fantastic. So let's open up the hood and see what's under there. So here it is, the heart of the Integra Type S. It's a two liter, four cylinder turbocharged. You have 320 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque connected to, of course, a six-speed manual that's the only available transmission for this just as it should be zero to 60 in about 4.8 seconds top speed it comes in at 167 miles per hour and it is indeed front wheel drive which i thought would be maybe an issue when you're driving this specifically high speed corners you would maybe have some torque steer because you do have 320 horsepower all sent to the front wheels but this has a mechanical limited slip diff in the front so this handles like a go-kart and we're gonna go for a drive later on in this video. Fuel economy sits at about 21 city, 28 highway. And the price for this, as this one is spec, sits around $52,000. $500. Have a look at this functional vent in the hood up here. Beautifully done. And yes, you do have a prop rod. So let's have a look at this gorgeous design from Acura. What I think they did here is went completely nuts with their styling in a very good way. Have a look at the very clean identity right here with these LEDs in this typical shape that we have uh, seen from a lot of Acura models these days. And you have this nice, very slim indicator LED up top. And then you have this Type S grill. So they redesigned the grill of the Type S compared to the A-Spec to have 170% more cooling to the engine. And the thing I really wasn't a fan of when it comes to the A-Spec is the lower section. So have a look at the bumper integration and the bumper design. Compare this, the Type S, to the A-Spec and it's completely different because in the A-Spec we have these uh, pieces right here, these intakes being almost like a T-shape and it look very weak and it definitely doesn't look sporty enough for a Type S. However, in this case, they blacked out the entire lower piece, as you can see, and everything here is functional. So you have functional air vents on the sides right here with this big lip or wing down here at the bottom. You also have functional air intake in the middle and of course the grill is completely functional as well. You can see the radiators back there. And I also do like this pattern in the grill that we have everything is like angled towards the front logo that we have in the front the hood design is beautiful as well as i said specifically in this pearl white we have all these lines connecting to the corner of the grill we have this functional air vent as, as we talked about so air flows in here and comes out here to create some more downforce in the front end overall a fantastic looking design by acura and it's definitely one of these cars there's no mistaking this for anything else than an acura when you look at it specifically with these headlights and the grill in the middle. And of course, another detail that I love in the front end is that they stamped the Integra logo into the bumper itself. And we also have this line cutting and creating some sort of a chamfer for the headlight unit itself. It looks very aggressive, but it also looks very beautiful in my opinion. Now, coming around to the side view, and this is actually with the wide body fenders that we have here, this is 2.8 inches wider than the A-Spec. And I think that makes a a world of difference when it comes to the plantedness of this car. Just have a look at these big fenders in the front end and how well integrated they are in the rest of the body. And then these come down into the side skirt. So when you're stepping into this car, there is quite a distance from where the body stops to the interior. Have a look at this. And I love this. It adds a lot of sportiness to this car. And you also have these Type S badges here, floor mats as well, and this red interior, which you're gonna have a look at in a second. And then the key body 
body line here is this shoulder line that goes from up here the rear of the greenhouse into and cuts down through the front front fender and then comes back into the front end bumper beautifully done by acura when it comes to the side view as well with these clean proportions of course this is a hatchback you can definitely see that it doesn't have this three box design instead it's more of a sloping curvature the roof line as it goes in to the spoiler in the back so these wheels now if i were to pick wheels for this car i would a hundred percent go with the bronze wheels with the white setup of the exterior paint like we have here the pearl white with the bronze wheels so these are 19 inch wheels with the brembo brakes in the front end so all the a spec you get 18 inch wheels but here you get 19s but the thing is these are actually lighter they're bigger but they're lighter than the ones you get on the a spec so it's all about the performance here on the type s and i think the wheel design themselves look very good but it, it's a little sh it's a shame that they have this in shark gray the color because you can't really see the spoke design of the wheel themselves and that's the main reason why i would pick this in bronze and i also think the bronze would work super well with the white exterior an option that you can get for the type s is you can have these uh, mirror caps in carbon fiber then we also have this line right here in the bottom ca carving out some more of this volume that we have in this car beautifully done again by acura and i do like that they completely deleted the option to have a sunroof up here because you don't want that in a tight pass instead you want to have a lower center of gravity so coming around to the rear end and here we have <laughs> the three bazooka tailpipes have a look at this and just have a look at these stands with these wider fenders they look fantastic and i think they add so much to this design and the wheels almost sit flush with the bodywork i would like to have them stick out maybe half an inch more or so but comparing this to the a spec and it's a completely different story when we talk about the design here this aggressive diffuser that we have have at the bottom section and then again with these three quad proper bazooka tailpipes in the middle and it sounds absolutely fantastic this Acura Integra Then you have the taillights. I'm not so sure about the taillight design here. Personally, I think I would rather have it be a little bit more boxy in the rear end than what we have here. This is too round for my taste. It still looks very good, don't get me wrong, but personally, I would have a bit more of a squared off rear end, even though these taillights look fantastic as well with the same type of curvature that we have right here that we have in the front end with the LED indicator up here. Now, if we pop the hatch, you can see just how much space we have back here. It is plenty of space. And if you need more space, you can fold down the rear seats if you want to. And then you have all the space you need back here to store whatever you want. Now, this carbon fiber spoiler up here, this is a $950 option to have this on. And I think this is a very important piece to put on this car because I think it contrasts well with all the black that goes down, that goes on in the, in the uh, down lower section of the rear end. I do want to have something to kind of balance that off. And I think this wing does exactly that. And it is proper carbon fiber as well, looking fantastic. As I said, we talked about this diffuser, but let's have a closer look at it. We have these wings, everything is functional to suck the rear end down to the ground a little better. And then we do have the three centered, same size exhaust pipes in the middle looking great. So with that said, we talked about the exterior. Let's jump in and have a look at this beautiful interior as well. So we have this red leather in contrast with the black pieces all over this car looking great. I do like the red with the white exterior, it looks fantastic. So let's jump in and fire this up. So let's start with the integration of the gauge cluster. This looks fantastic. This is exactly what I want to see. An old style for the integration. What I mean by that is the housing, of course, integrated nicely. And then we have a 10.2 inch fully digital uh, gauge cluster, which you can switch between the drive modes like this. And you can see that it changes colors. And it also switches drive modes very fast, which is something that I appreciate and something that other cars sometimes do very slowly. So this just switches in an instant and you're in the exact drive mode that you want. Now you might think the 10.2 inches for the gauge cluster is a little bit small, but I think it suits this car to have it in this size. It's not too big and it's not too small. It's just the right size, even though a lot of other cars have 
12.3 inches, you still have some information on the sides here, as you can see, for example, the fuel gates, gauge and the temp gauge over there. So it's all good. And then you have a nine inch infotainment screen. Now this integration is, you know, a proper iPad on the dash integration, but that's totally fine. I don't mind that at all. I think it works great because it doesn't ob obstruct any view from the driver position. So it doesn't stick up too much up here. And it is a pretty fairly easy system to use. You have Apple CarPlay wireless. So that's fantastic to have in a car in this price range. And you have a bunch of different settings here as well. How you want to customize your car, go into vehicle settings. We do have driver assist uh, systems you can uh, customize. And we also have door window settings. Setup. You can change the lighting setup as well. This has auto high beam, which I like. It works fantastic. Then you have individual settings. So you can make this an individual um, drive mode by clicking on this individual button down here works great it's a bit of a very simplistic layout for the software of this uh, infotainment screen but other than that i think it works nice further down we do have these vents i do like the texture that we have on these vents right here with the hazard button right here in the middle very easily adjusted uh, vents and that's what i want to see they have some nice resistance to them as well further down we come in to the climate control settings super easy to use because we have dials physical buttons for every single button in here and every single function that you want this is the fan speed right here in the middle and then you have the temperature control right here on the sides we do have heated seats but we don't have cooled seats in this car which i think should be standard equipment in this price range then you have a couple of more buttons here for the ac controls further down we do have a 12 volt outlet and we have a usb-c usb port we have the wireless charging situated right here pretty big and it doesn't really have a rubberized uh, surface to it but i haven't had any problems with my phone sliding around when i'm taking corners in this car now this is the six speed manual transmission and this is an absolute joy to drive this is a fantastic six speed and i wouldn't want to have this car in anything any other transmission than what we have here i also like the design of this this gets extremely hot when it's in the sun so you might want to just be cautious of that if you're uh, driving on a hot summer's day and you jump into the car this is going to melt your hand off and here you have the uh, controls for the drive mode so you have this toggle to select what drive mode you want to be in so you have sport plus you have sport and you have comfort and this car is set up a little softer than what we have in the honda civic type r so the suspension even though it is in sport plus it's still a little softer than the harshest mode that we have in the uh, civic type r i also like this alcantara that goes around this uh, gear selector here it looks it looks nice with the red stitching you have the type s down here the parking brake two cup holders in the middle with the gloss black I would much rather have this be a different texture, maybe the same texture like we have here instead of gloss black, because as you know, fingerprints all over this place. Moving further back, we have this armrest, and this is a pretty small armrest with some storage in there, but it doesn't have to be any bigger than this. It feels great to rest your arm on when you're driving this car, and it feels fantastic to just have it here in red leather as well. Looking at these seats, now these seats are pretty harsh, I mean, they're pretty hard, but I do like that because it feels solid. So when you're in these seats, they're actually very comfortable, even though you might feel like they are a little hard to begin with. But when you're in them, they feel fantastic. You have this suede Alcantara in the middle with the red leather on the outside, and then you have the Type S stamped up here in the headrest, looking fantastic. Up top, as I said, no sunroof which is absolutely perfect i don't want that in this car anyway now one thing about this specific integral type s is that the steering wheel is a little off center and i'm not sure why that is because this car is 2000 miles on it but when i drive straight it sits a little angle like this which if i were to own this car would be a pretty annoying thing but also a pretty easy fix i'm going to show that when we go out for a drive I forgot to say that we have the red start button here as well so looking at the steering wheel looks nice we have the perforated leather here with the red stitching on the inside acura logo in the middle of course controls for the cruise control settings are over here and the radio settings and voice commands are on the left side and you also have regular sized or designed stocks on each side for the indicator the lights and you have the wipers on the right side. 
On the left side of the steering wheel, you do have another vent, you do have the uh, traction control on and off, and that's pretty much it. Looking at this door design, I do like what's going on here with the red. You have the silver and the black up top. It feels quality, this car, and that's what I like about this design. At Acura, it's supposed to be a little bit more luxurious than what you have in the Honda Civic, for example, and I think they managed to separate the two a little bit, not just with the exterior design, but also with the interior design. And last but not least, in the front end here, we do have a proper size glove box on this Integra. Now, let's check out the back seat real quick, and let's see. I'm sitting pretty comfortable here, and this is my driving position, so let's see if I can fit behind myself in the back seat. All right, jumping in to the back seat, you can see that we have a similar design on the door like we have in the front end. And this being a hatchback with a pretty sloping roof line, let's see how this feels back here. So it feels pretty good, but I do have head space, and keep in mind that I'm 6'1". I do have plenty of uh, leg room as well. I would probably just sit like this anyway, not have my legs straight up like this. And if I do that, it's totally fine. Then we have two cup holders right here in the middle. We don't have any folding armrest for the passengers in the back, which is fine as well. I don't really care about that. Not much going on here in the back. You can see there, this is completely empty. There are no USBs or nothing back here. Basically, just two seats, and that's about it. Now, what this Integra Type S is all about is the driving. So let's take this beautiful 2024 Integra for a drive and let's see what it's all about of course let's put it into Sport Plus and we are off beautiful day today to be filming on specifically on these roads this sound the shifter there is one little thing in here if you listen closely you can hear sort of a rattle coming from the gauge cluster at certain speeds a certain vibration it sounds almost like radio static but what you can do is to drown that noise out with this two liter turbo four cylinder and you don't it doesn't bother you anymore. It's such a good handling car, this uh, 2024 Integra Type S. Goes around the corners, even under power, and even if that is just a front-wheel drive, this mechanical front differential, it doesn't feel like, it feels almost like an all-wheel drive car. Downshift to second, step on it. What a great car this is to drive. It's such a fun car. It feels like a go-kart on the road. Just sticks to it. And I love the design of this as well. As I said, I think this should be the only Integra out there because I don't think the A-Spec does the Integra name justice. It just looks like an ILX from 2019 that's been modernized. Oh yeah. You just want to keep shifting this even though you don't necessarily need to just because it's so much fun.
have a two liter turbocharged four cylinder, 320 horsepower, zero to 60 in about 4.8 seconds. And honestly, I don't feel like I need more power than this. This is totally fine for this type of car and this type of vehicle. It just flies through the corners and you're, you come out of the corner, you step on it and boom, you're in the next corner. What's interesting is that Honda, the Civic Type R, the previous generation Civic Type R, was a, a bit of an overkill when it comes to styling with all the fake vents, the wings and everything, the styling, the graphics. And then this generation Civic Type R, they dialed that down by a hundred. Instead, what they did was they took the Acura Integra Type S and now this feels like, the, not overstyled, this is a lot more beautiful than the previous generation Civic Type R, but comparing the current Civic Type R to uh, this Integra Type S, the more aggressive styling is definitely gonna have to be the Integra, which feels interesting because it's supposed to be the more uh, subtle design and more luxurious design than the Honda, but I guess they switched it up for this generation. So, how can we sum up this 2024 Integra Type S? All I gotta say is, go and drive one, and I'm pretty sure you will fall in love with it. I would personally want to have an all-wheel drive car here in Colorado for as a daily, but if you live in a place where it doesn't snow that much, this would be a fantastic daily driver. Such a fun car to drive, and as I said, I definitely prefer this over the Honda Civic Type R. And this costs, as I said, about $52,500. And for that price, I think this is a pretty good deal.